Hey, how you doing out there in YouTube land? I hope everyone is uh, having a very good Saturday. So this is Saturday morning. We're going to continue on the portrait that I'm working on. And it is a sepia portrait. And I'm pretty excited about it. Excited to uh, work with you guys. And I'm just going to get situated, but uh, this is my, let me lower this volume here, because that doesn't work. Okay, great. So I am live, I can see that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to chat. Hey, what's up there, Willie? Good to see you. It's very cool. Now what I'm going to do, Willie, which is really cool, simultaneously I am going to stream on Facebook. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm getting all teched out, Willie. I don't know. My old age. But I am uh, logging in live on Facebook. I just have to write... Uh, let's see. So we'll just do airbrush demo. And thanks for your patience, Willie. I appreciate it. Just want to get everything situated. Try and uh, you know help out as many people as possible. So I am going to Facebook. Hey, everybody at Facebook. I am also on YouTube simultaneously. So this is going to be pretty cool. Let's see. So All right. So I just hit refresh. So I can see the people on... So, Willie, this is my airbrush studio, so it's a lot easier for me to work with the airbrush and because and all my other paints are here. The other studio is basically for drawing. So let me just uh, go to Facebook. There we go. We are live on Facebook as well. Just got to go to the comments. Okay. Hello. Yeah. Okay, so we are great. Ah, thanks, Willie. I appreciate that. That's really cool. So I, I'm really happy uh, that you're enjoying that. So look at this, Willie. So we have this, and then I have this screen, which is sort of a, more of an overall view. And then I have this camera, which is a little, little better. I don't have the overhead like I did in the other studio, but... So hopefully this is, uh, this will be helpful. Okay, so let's go ahead and do some, some testing. So I'm going to show you my larger setup here. So you can see this is the monitor I'm working from. And let me just move this over. See here, let me see if I could... See, that's the monitor. This is my studio. And let's see. So I'm just going to test this mixture. What I did is I'm going to do some of the really dark areas. So I mixed some, some Van Dyke Brown with a little bit of the Raw Umber and then just a little bit of titanium buff which is like a white color and what that does is makes it opaque so it's important to keep colors opaque right now and so what I'm gonna do is hey Gloria how you doing how's everything thanks for stopping by okay cool so now what we're gonna do let me go to this other camera here a little closer so I, as you can see, I always test over here to make sure that the mixture is good and that I have a really nice flow before I go uh, onto the actual surface. And I just want to darken up her eye. And like I said, we just got to take our time. But that really helps because that's, uh, you know, a really dark area. And that's going to lighten up the area around her. So I know I have to go even darker. Ian, how's it going? Good to see you, man. 
How's the sound in the uh, uh, the video look? All right. So I am streaming on Facebook and YouTube as well. So my Facebook people and my YouTube people can both enjoy this uh, innovative live stream because it's in my uh, studio where I donate just for airbrush and pastel. So. I don't have that overhead look, but I still think it's uh, really good because I'm more comfortable to paint in here, so it helps a lot. make sure you guys are seeing okay good everything looks good on both streams so I'm happy hey Bhupathi how you doing from India how's it going over there I also did a very early one here in the States because I have my friends in the UK and India because oh thank you so much Willie I appreciate that I want to help out also my international uh, friends, so definitely don't want to leave them out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a liner brush, it's a little bit different. Let me just get that situated here. I'm going to find a liner brush. Organized chaos. That's pretty much my studio, guys. I'm sure everyone can relate to that. So I'm just going to test out here. You know, I can get a little more detail, uh, a little better by using the brush. Oh, happy you're here too, Gloria. Thanks. Bill, how's it going? Oh, you know, I didn't want to show the whole, uh, I, I could have went landscape on that build, but part of my studio is a little bit of a mess, so I don't want to show the whole thing. <laughs> so you caught me. My studio is getting away from me a little bit. I'm sure that happens to all of us, you know, may, maybe for me it's like six months, and then it really gets away from me. So I'm definitely due for, you know, a uh, really thorough tidying up. Just, you know, just basically what I need to do is to go ahead and organize everything once again, you know. So, hey Kiva, how's it going? Good to see ya. Very cool. Good morning. Ah, thanks, Mupati. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. And what I'll do is I could switch to this camera and you see a little bit more of my studio, Bill. Uh, but not the whole thing. So what's important is that I continue the drawing that's accurate that I started with. So that is crucial. So that's why I make sure I'm not covering everything, obscuring the view on you guys. The great thing on working on wood, I can always sand it down a little bit if it gets too dark or you know go over it with a lighter color 
so I can always do things. Yeah, you're right, Bill. <laughs> about three, about three days to get messy or to clean it, Bill. Hey, Matt, how's it going? Good to see ya. Matt's also a UK friend, so very cool. I know it's a big day for you guys in the UK with the royal wedding and everything. Always test over here. Sometimes it could get a little too wet, so this really helps to make up oh, some spare tape here. Ah, oh, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, Bupati, you know, I'm, re I'm reaching you guys right now, and that makes me happy. And, you know, more people will catch on. That would be fine. But right now, it's good. Right now, it's just a few of us, so I can give more attention to you guys. There's always a silver lining to that. So definitely email me on Gmail, everybody, if you have any questions. I'm always happy to help. And I use the same mixture that I'm airbrushing here as when I'm actually coming in with the paintbrush. So that's pretty cool. So, you know, you can definitely... Don't be afraid of uh, going in with the paintbrush, that's for sure. I don't want you to, a lot of times people want to do everything with the airbrush, but it's not necessary and it's a lot easier to do it this way than do it that way. That's how I look at it. So applying these little dark accents, they, they might go away, you know, when I apply more paint over it. but. The way I see it is, uh, at least you can establish those really darks, and then you realize how dark you have to go around the color, which is good. So this is a little different setup. It's uh, pretty interesting. It took me about an hour and a half today to get everything situated because I have to recalibrate the sound and the lighting and everything. So it's pretty involved, actually. What I'm doing now is sort of like a dry brush. So I'm sort of, you know, drying the, the brush from the, the paint from the brush. So it's like very light and I can control it subtlety is everything especially when you go into an area like like her mouth That really helps. And I might, you know, make a mistake here and there, and which I have known to do. Let me see if I could uh, get this eraser. Oh boy. There we go. Okay. Let's make sure we keep everything subtle. That's very important. And later I'll just go ahead and dust in there. 
Hey Hector, ¿cómo estás? Buenos días, señor. Muy buenos días. better a little bit turned over but we'll see let me see if I can just maybe erase this sometimes you know our original drawings are off and that happens but I'm just gonna double check here I think I'm okay with here. Maybe today I'm not sure, but I'm thinking of going ahead and uh, cutting the frisket here for the hair and then reapplying the, uh, go ahead and reapplying the frisket over her face and then we can work on the hair and I think that will really help us as to how dark we want to get because everything is really light and white around her it's making everything look dark it's like simultaneous contrast it's called so well thank you Gloria I appreciate that let's see where else we could go ahead and put some dark accents here and there I think over here by her ear a little dark. There we go. And that's gonna that's gonna help us. Same thing over here. Let's see if we could get a little closer to the correct shape of her nostril there. And over here. Now you can see that the paintbrush is a little darker because um, I didn't dry it off on the paper. So you can control the light and dark basically with how wet the paintbrush is. So I'm pretty happy with the way the mouth is coming out right now. So I'm fine with that. So let me go ahead and just very quickly, always, since this is acrylic here, you always want to make sure that you uh, wash it out real quick. So give me one moment. The kitchen is right there. And I'm going to go rinse this out and I'll be right back. So please forgive me if I'm a little slow today guys. No more creamer. That's horrible. So I only had one cup of coffee today. So I should be okay. Uh, but it might be touch and go here and there. Let's see. Uh, uh, muchísimas gracias Hector. Muy amable. Estoy muy contento que tú estás aquí. Let's see if we can maybe 
and glaze some of this dark color here. Just where, let's go back to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little brave and I'm going to glaze some dark color. Right like that. Just darken it up a little bit. So right now I'm pretty much looking at the reference and saying to myself, okay, it could be a little bit darker. Yeah, Gloria. I uh, know. I. It's not good. I was gonna have a cup of coffee last night, but I saw the creamer situation, and I said to my, Ekaterina, how are you? Thank you for stopping by. So exciting. I appreciate that. How are you today? Now darken her eye eyebrow here, and what that does, it basically makes me want to actually makes me see where I can actually go a little darker in her face. Same right here. Now, since I'm in the studio, which is pretty good, I have access to all of my things more readily such as this freehand shield right here but yeah once I clean my studio a bit better I'll have more of a, a better access to a lot of my things oh thanks Gloria I definitely will come by for some of that uh, creamer pretty soon Gloria is my neighbor, and she's always so cool. She helps me out. It's a little hard edged here, so maybe we can go ahead and use this freehand shield to establish that hard edge, because otherwise it's going to be very soft. See that? It just a great tool. So we got the we have the hard edge now on the bottom. So let's work on the hard edge on the top. Let's see. It's always tricky, and take your time when you do this because um, you don't want to dust and get a hard edge on the wrong side. So you see, it's. I think it's better. Uh, we are getting a little better, so we know that we can come in with some midtones and establish more midtones as well, right? So that's important. Okay, great. Just double checking everything here on the front of the YouTube and the Facebook front. And thank you so much, Bupati, for the wonderful comments. I appreciate that very much.
a little bit of a soft edge over here. So even though this part's frisketed, I'm going to go ahead and just apply some of that soft edge. And then when I go in dark, it'll actually work better. And then here it's hard edged, and then it gets soft right about here. And it's interesting, so we're going down here. We have a little bit of a hard edge, basically where the neck and the back of the trapezius, the front of the, the trapezius sort of connect here. See, we just sort of established that hard edge right there, which I think does work. Here's a little soft edge here, so we'll just go ahead and apply this a little bit. Now you, can, you guys can also see how I can go a little darker in the mid-tone, which I'm going to do. I'm not sure if I'm going to work on... I think I'm going to use a two-brush hairbrush. I'm going to keep this sort of arced with the darker color. And right now I think I'm going to start coming in with that mid-tone, so, which I already have mixed from the last session, the day before last night. So of course I'm just going to... Let's see, so you see, I'm just going to disconnect this one and park it over here. And what I'm going to do is go get my, my Micron. So let me just go get my Micron over here. I think I'm going to try this one, which is the CMC Plus, which I really like. This is the one I've had for a long time, I think for like five years. I already changed the fluid head, uh, the whole right here. So, all right, so we got that situated. Let me move this over here. And I think this is the mid-tone here that I had the other night. I'm just going to double check. That's the darker color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to very quickly uh, go ahead and mix it. I have these... I have these very long uh, popsicle sticks, which are really cool. And you can just break them off like this, and you can get a whole bunch of them. I usually just, you know. Now, what's really interesting or really important that I find when you mix these, right? You don't want to go like this. If you go like this, there's a little ridge, and you'll sort of spray paint all over the place on you, on your painting, on the cat. You don't want to do that. So you just want to mix with a circular movement and it's a little thick so since I'm working with the micron which has a 0.18 or 0.21 uh, nozzle you're gonna it's gonna give you problems so let's go ahead and since it's already thin you don't want to mix it with the airbrush medium airbrush medium is basically to take something like fluid acrylics which comes out thick like maybe uh, heavy cream and this makes it uh, sprayable but when it's already sprayable and you want to make it thinner then you use the high flow paint right here the high flow medium I'm not going to put too much in just to give it a little bit of uh, a little bit thinner and what it does it doesn't lighten it up too much 
And then if I feel it's still too thin, I could go ahead and put a little bit of water in there. Just a little bit of water. Now, I was always told by the chemist over at uh, Golden, never thin out your airbrush, uh, never thin out your paint, acrylic paint with water more than 10%. Because then you start separating the binder. And that's what holds the color together. It just won't adhere to the surface. Okay, so let's go to the other screen. Okay, so let's see what kind of color we have here. Oh, and I'm also testing. I'm getting such a nice flow. I'm getting such a beautiful flow with this particular airbrush right now. But I don't think this is the right color. So I'm going to go ahead and... Hmm. Let's see. No, I think this, this will work. This definitely will work. Let's go to the other screen here. Now I could add just a little bit more of maybe some Van Dyke Brown, but let's just start a little bit lighter here. And it's nice to just, you know, start to deepen things up a little bit. Like right here at the white of the eyes. Let's deepen that color. Yes, definitely. Uh, for Definitely, Willie. So, to start out, like, uh, I would say, now, what type of uh, work do you do, uh, Willie? What's the best, uh, what's the best to describe what you're interested in painting or drawing? Are you interested in drawing first and then painting? Or, you know, do you like landscapes or people? And, and I definitely can help you with that. And also, uh, Willie, are you here in the States or are you in the UK? So, some of the books that I do like... Uh, Actually, some of the art magazines are really great, like the uh, Artist Magazine, which is fantastic. And they have a lot of good articles that really are helpful, uh, you know, on different mediums such as... Okay, great. So, uh, you get the Artist Magazine. You can get that at, at Barnes & Noble. That's a great way to start out. They have a lot of really, like I said, some really great articles that are really, really good. Uh, what medium do you uh, prefer? Because there are some magazines that are actually better for different mediums. And let's see here. And as far as, uh, you know, just starting out, 
uh, it's very important to, you know, have patience with yourself, right? And uh, just give yourself a lot of time. Just have fun. Don't worry about how things come out at that point. I think it's best to just, you know, enjoy the process. Better first mediums, the start, of course, is pencil. And then another good first medium would be, when you want to go into color, would be pastel. Because it's a good bridge between, uh, between uh, pastel painting, I mean between color and black and white. But I definitely would stay in black and white for a while. Uh, so this way it gives you a chance to learn about values. Uh, you know, from lights and darks, and that, that will really help you. Trying to go in with color and solve color issues, as well as, you know, drawing and light and shade, I think would be too difficult. So definitely start with some really good drawing. Uh, there's a book by uh, Bridgman, and as it sounds, uh, he has some really good uh, constructive ways of drawing the figure, which I really do enjoy. Uh, that's really good. Try and get some texture in her lips right now. You know, drawing is great, and with the airbrushes, is really good to do the airbrush as well. Uh, there are some really great videos out there. Uh, as far as books, I don't think there are any. Uh, there is a book on airbrush that you can get on. I think it's called the Encyclopedia of Airbrush Techniques, and you can get that on Amazon right now. They're used really inexpensive, like $15. I think you would enjoy that. It shows a lot of different, different techniques, such as masking and, uh, uh, you know, a lot of different freehand shields. And it's a book that was written a long time ago, back when illustration was big, before computers. So I highly recommend that book. You'll enjoy that. As you can see with the freehand shield, I'm able to really establish some really nice hard edges here, which really helps. And you can see I'm sort of deepening her up now, which is really good, and that really helps. Yeah, I really, I never had, hey Matt, how you doing, sir? I really never had the pleasure of working with the Hotter and Steenbeck, but a lot of great artists can't be wrong. I, I think that, you know, from what I've read, the engineering is fantastic. And uh, 0 0.2 is really good as far as the, the needle size, so you can get really nice detail. So definitely, definitely I don't think you can go wrong with the Harder and Steenbeck. Uh, I know they're a little less expensive than the Wattas. I'm an Iwata guy, but that doesn't mean that, you know, the other airbrushes aren't fantastic. I do, I can say that the Wada for the most part does everything I want it to. So, that I can say. 
Now, these freehand shields, we have a lot of them. These, you know, I recommend you picking up as many freehand shields as you can because that's going to really make your life a lot easier and make your paintings better. So I have this one here, but I think it's a little big for my purposes. So I'm just going to take a moment and just see if I can locate a better freehand shield for me in the studio. Just bear with me, guys. They are all over the place. Like I said in my studio, a little crazy. A little bit crazy. Let's see. So we have this one. And then that one. And I have some really good ones if I can only find them. Let's see. I'm just going to check over here. Okay. So let's see if we could use this one. Like I said, it's a little big for my purposes, my needs right now. But let me see if this will do. If not, I'll just very quickly go into the other studio. You know what? That's not a very good that's not a very good teaching thing, that's for sure. So I am gonna go. I'm gonna go into the other studio, I'll just take a few moments. So I'll be right back. Okay, so thanks for hanging out and waiting for me. I did find this little thing here. Found $20. And Willie, this is a really good book I highly recommend. Let me see if I can get that. So this is The Artist's Complete Guide to Figure Drawing. It is really fantastic. He goes into his method of blocking in uh, drawings and also uh, talks about things such as non-parallelism and the contours, the outside contours, as well as the inner shading. So, highly recommend that. That's also available on Amazon. So, I hope that helps. So as I put the book down, look what I found. Oh my God, all of these freehand shields. Look at that. I hit the mother load here. See, had a lot of them. They were just over there. But now I can pick and choose which one I want to use, which is really good. Hey, Dion, how's it going? Thank you so much. I appreciate that. This is also on YouTube, so you'll see it later on as well. Good to see you, man. Vladimir, how's it going? Very cool. Very exciting. 
Okay, so now we're going to uh, move over here to this. Yep, this is the right one. Now, sorry I don't have the close-ups I had with the, like I do in the other studio, but at least here I'll be able to work a little quicker. Okay, so, so basically we want to go ahead and hit this dark here above her eye. I think if I went in with the uh, paintbrush, it would be a little harsh. So this is a way to keep it soft. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of liking that. And let's see if I could take the other airbrush. So I'll disconnect the Micron, go back to the Eclipse SBS. And I'm just going to look for the best. shape this with the eraser afterwards especially if you feel you made a mistake which I did and I think I have a little bit of a tip dry here Maybe I could lower the air pressure a little bit. I have this little Mac valve here. Just lower the air pressure, give you a little more, a little more control. There we go. And then come back, of course, with the eraser. And then let's see if I could uh, maybe reiterate this with this light sepia color that I have. And I'll get the mall stick. If you guys don't know what mall sticks are, they're, uh, you can get them at uh, blickart.com. And basically this is like an ancient uh, tool to steady your hand when you're doing tight details such as this. What I can do is uh, come in with the airbrush and maybe uh, darken a little bit of this area here of the nostril. That would be helpful. And then right here, there's a little dark at the tip of her lip there. And that kind of helps to, you know, bring it together. And here we could add a little, little dark accents here and there. But I'm definitely in no rush to finish this or to go really fast. There's no deadline. 
So it's okay to take your time. And I know like whenever we're working in airbrush or anything like that, there's always a time in the painting where you're like, oh my God, how am I going to pull this off? And that seems to happen a lot with me. Sometimes I'm like, how in the world am I going to pull this off? But I think if as long as we're patient and we breathe and take it easy, it'll work out. And let me know, guys, if everything is still good with sound or color, uh, sound or video, if any, any issues. You know, as always, I always appreciate you guys helping me out with that. Because, uh, you know, like I always say, I'm a one-man band here. Just little dark accents here on the lip here. Very lightly. Just so I can get separation from her teeth and her lips. And I'll come in later and refine things. But these are more just some mental notes for myself. And of course you can dry, use a dry brush technique. And that really makes it light when you apply it. And of course you may lighten this, you know, that's okay. But it's good to always establish. So I'm looking at this here. And I definitely see right here that I missed the angle of her teeth because I'm looking at the photograph and it's not too bad but I have it sort of between 11 and 12 o'clock and I think the way that the is more at 12 o'clock so that's something I'm gonna work on and fix but I just want to show you guys that you got to be tough on yourselves you know in the sense uh, well, thank you. Thank you, Willie. Uh, you, we have to be, when I say take it easy on yourselves, yes. I mean, work hard. Don't worry so much how it comes out. But always have that critical eye if you see something wrong, not to ignore it. Because that's going to, ignoring it is just, is not going to solve the problem. So we have to really be diligent and say, okay, that's an issue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out right now what's the best way for me to handle that. So it's good right now for purposes of learning is how are we going to attack that issue. I'm going to try two different ways. The first way, I'm just going to clean this brush. The first way is perhaps I could take some white paint and maybe go ahead and cover that. Let's see how it is. This is a very thin, uh, this is a very thin white mixture here. And I'm going to see if that's successful. If not, I'll just go ahead with a thicker white paint. Even though that's just a slight difference here, for me, it's, I know it's wrong. So I'm going to, it's going to, bother me. So I'm definitely have to come in with a thicker white. So I'm going to take 
the thickest airbrush white, which is titanium white, right here. And what we're going to do is, I'm just going to apply a little bit here. If not, then I'm going to have to go ahead and get some regular white paint that's not airbrush colors and take care of it. But I'm not going to leave it there. If I know that's wrong, I'm not going to leave it. Even if it's a slight angle issue, I think that would be irresponsible of me. And of course, I can always go over this with, you know, with some uh, paint, you know, s you know, airbrush it over with a, a light sepia, so it's going to look, you know, like it belongs. So right now, my only goal is to cover that, where I put that angle of her teeth there. Now I'm going to let that dry. And so that definitely is important. So I might have to go over with another, with another layer, but I want to make sure that the way I have her teeth, the angle, even though it's a microcosm, I mean, it's, it's like only a couple degrees, but those couple degrees could set everything else off, like a domino effect. So that's why it's very important. Wendy, how are you? Good to see you. I missed you. So now I have the white, maybe I can just go ahead and hit some of these little highlights here. Just establish them. I know I'm going to get darker, but it's sort of like working out the drawing aspect of it as well. Hey Jake, how you doing? So Jake has a question. He says, uh, how do I know that the value is correct? Uh, the best way to start, thank you so much Wendy. The best way to start with values is to have a value scale with you and you can get them just type in value scale on the web and you'll see you type in value scale and then look under images under Google and you'll see it and you can just print it out and it goes from black all the way to white and probably about six to eight values in between. I would start with the six or four values in between. And when you're drawing, start drawing, and I want you to hit your darkest darks, and then your lightest lights, and then you can see how the colors vary between one and another. So it's really important that you take your time and really study uh, what's happening as far as value. Uh, I would do like, you know, there's a lot of exercises, like, uh, like a ball in space, uh, you know, like a ball, like on a table, or just draw an egg on your table. Or there's a lot of pictures of eggs on, you know, eggs and spheres and stuff. And learn what makes a three-dimensional form. And that, that, I think, will help you. And take your time. So, uh, you can do it in airbrush, you can do it in drawing, that doesn't matter. So, both are uh, very... Uh, Airbrush is, is good with that too, so that's no worries. The good thing about airbrush is that you could do what a, you can do a drawing, like a black and white painting in half the time, which is really good. It's uh, so. So I like the way I'm able to I let that dry and I'm going to cover it again. So I'm pretty happy with the way that I was able to sort of reset her, reset the application of the angle. So I'm happy with that, believe it or not. Now, with the dry brush technique, I'll just, you know, get rid of some of the wetness of the paint. And then very lightly will work on, I mean, just a touch. And 
I can refine the shape of her nostril with some white paint as well. Why not? Who says there's rules, right? There's no rules here. Just rule of, of getting things accurate, that's all. That's the only rule that we have. Felipe, how you doing? Phil, how's it going? Used to work with Phil. Good to see you, man. Very cool. We have a nice, healthy group today. So, Phil, I am, a con I am a on Facebook as well as on YouTube at the same time. Yeah, so we're, we, we got some nice, uh, nice uh, people on both YouTube and Facebook. So I'm pretty excited about that. We're working on the airbrush. This is my reference over here. So pretty cool. So good to see you there, Phil. Okay. So let me go ahead and wash this brush off because remember it's acrylic so don't wait on that. I can't even like put it down and I'll be like yeah I'm airbrushing 10 minutes it's a rock. So I'll be right back. My kitchen's just over here. that let's go back to so right now I have the hose uh, on the Eclipse so I'm going to disconnect this and then reconnect it with my custom Micron CM dash C plus plus because it has this little Mac valve here the CM uh, C does not have the Mac valve only difference So I really hope that uh, helped out, Jake, with that question of values. Values are very important, so definitely don't want to guess. Practice seeing them. Practice seeing those values. They really go a long way. And I'm back with my freehand shield. So. Remember, the freehand shield you want to cover where you're not spraying and this way. So you don't want to do it this way because then you're going to be spraying where you want to have it covered. You want to keep it light. So let's see. Take your time. Do a test. There we go. See? You get that nice that nice effect. So right here is a little hard edged. Let's see which freehand shield would be the best for that. Like I said, buy as many of these as you can because each of them, you know, will help you in different situations. So we were working on this nostril here. Remember, you want to cover where you're not painting. So that sounds like a simple thing, but it took me a while to figure that out. I know you guys are smarter than me, that's for sure. So it, it took me a little fur longer to find things out sometimes. But the good thing is, I did find them out and I can share them with you guys. And we're just going to keep going until we find the exact shape I'm looking for here. Because it sort of like turns up. See like right there it just turns up a little bit. So I'm going to do a test here on the frisket. And let's give that a shot. Yeah, you see that? So that's good. Taking your time pays off. I like that. So it gives it a little bit of a better definition. Same thing here. There's like a hard edge right there. Sort of the bottom of her nose. And then right here it gets a little dark. 
So I like the way that looks. So that, that really helps out. And hey, William, good to see you. Yes, this is actually uh, masonite or uh, wood panel. You can get it at the Home Depot or uh, BlickArt.com, Lowe's, and they cut it for you. And what I do is I will take the masonite and I'll prepare a, a mixture of gesso and marble dust and water and then I'll apply it with a roller three times once vertically once horizontally once vertically again and what that does is doing it vertically and horizontally keeps it from having any kind of uniform any kind of weird uh, weird uh, patterns. This is a very unpatterned. Uh, it's a rough surface. I like it because if I want I can come in with pastel. I could sand it down. I could paint on it. It's really a great surface and uh, so I highly recommend uh, you know preparing a surface that is perfect for you. True trial and error. So here you can see there's a little bit of a hard edge right where her chin is. Let's see. I want to make sure I get that shape correct. Last couple days my airbrushes have not been working 100% the way I want them to. I even did a deep cleaning on this, but it happens. Okay, so maybe we can uh, move down to our chest area. Let's see. Yeah, I think we can here. So a few of my friends have asked me, they said they had trouble with this area, you know, you know, where the clavicle the clavicles meet with the sternum and then of course the these, these muscles over here uh, that's always tricky and that was a very good question and I feel that the knowledge that you need to gain is an anatomical knowledge and there's these muscles that go from behind the ear and they stretch on both sides behind each ear and attach right here at the clavicle and the sternum and if you have knowledge of that muscle the sternocleidomastoid you can definitely see it uh, in almost every pose every portrait you can identify that and that will help you with how the clavicle comes into play the sternum and these big muscles so I hope that helps all right so now there's a nice hard edge here so let's see if we could get it with this particular. No, I don't think so. I think this might be a better solution. Let's see. Yes. So, let's go ahead and hit this. Very hard, too harsh. That happens. So I'm just going to take my eraser and calm this down. Wow. And of course I'll come in with the white mixture and get rid of any uh, irregularities here. 
Don't worry about making mistakes. They all can get fixed. Believe it or not, Airbrush is one of the most uh, forgiving of mediums. A lot more forgiving than, let's say, if you're working in... Uh, a lot more forgiving, let's say you're working in watercolor. But this I'm working on this here. So I believe I got the uh, the the edge right, but I think it was just a little bit on the harsh side. I'm gonna warm this up with a nice orangey glaze. Over here we have this shape here. Now when I did the drawing of course if you guys have seen the drawing video that I have up on uh, on YouTube you'll see that I did an indication here but I had to erase it so I'm just redrawing that in. You want the when you're doing airbrush you want your drawing but you want to get rid of you don't want it to be too dark. So sometimes you're going to sacrifice a little bit of clarity. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that, William. Uh, I will have a combination, William, of hard and soft. That's what makes interesting paintings, is both hard and soft at the same time. So that variation of edges are really going to help. So there are areas I'm going to soften up. Uh, one of the things might be this little clavicle area, I might soften that up. Uh, here I might harden this up here. Uh, this has a nice, sort of brings her, her chin forward. So that, I'll probably harden that up. Yeah, so always watching for, for edge, edge work, it's very important. So I'm really happy with the way the teeth came out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dust over the white here. So and see now I'm really happy. I think okay so that was an error and I owned up to it and said I'm going to fix it. And it was a little scary at first but you know usually you can fix most things. It's always great to soften things up and, and uh, you know, if you need to, uh, go ahead and be more bold in certain areas. That's the compressor going off. Now right here, where the armpit is, we have a nice hard edge here. So I'm not going to get that hard edge just by airbrushing alone. So I'm going to actually achieve that hard edge by using a freehand shield. See that? Really pulls that out. Here's another nice hard edge here which is right where her arm and breast sort of meet. So again, let me make sure that, that so see when I went ahead and applied the freehand shield, there's a possibility that there's some paint left over. So before you reapply it, make sure this is dry. Otherwise, you'll take the paint from here and put it there and that's something you just don't want to, uh, Ah, oh, thank you so much. Yeah, you know what? Uh, William, that's a good point because teeth aren't white. They, uh, the highlights are a lighter color, but rarely, even if you uh, look at, at someone, because the teeth are inside the, the mouth, so they're not getting all the light. So even if they're like pearly white, they're not going to be white in real life. So it makes it more realistic. So I'm really glad that helped you, William. So let's go ahead and hit that right there. So this is my plan, guys, is that I'm planning on doing 
uh, YouTube demonstrations, demonstrations on Facebook, and also on Twitch. So Twitch is a really good website, and it uh, helps me as an artist, so I'll be going on there, uh, here and there. One of the things that you can do to help me out, if you can, always share my videos, uh, you know, on your Facebook, on Instagram, that would really help out and also get more people to see them. Getting a nice hard edge here. So this way you see the clavicle come in. And then we have this clavicle. So we have a little bit of a hard edge right here, but not too hard. And one of the ways that you can, you can put your finger underneath and spray and you'll get a softer edge. See that? So you get an edge, not as hard as this because I'm not going flush to the surface. I have my finger underneath. So that's a good technique, that really helps. So how do you like this setup here as opposed to the other setup? Uh, this is more of the airbrush setup because I, I have uh, a lot more room I need. The other one was flat. It's almost impossible for me to paint flat. So this enables me to uh, give you guys a lot better instruction. But for the drawing, I'm going to do it in the other studio because the drawing, the other studio is perfect because I have the overhead and I can I always work flat when drawing anyway I'm going to come in with this dark color and just uh, enrich that so let me go ahead and change the airbrushes so here we got the custom micron CMC plus and we're going to come back with this one, which of course is the side feed Eclipse. I believe this has a 0 .30 nozzle. The other one has a 0 .20 or 23 nozzle. So I always test it before I spray. Okay, so let's see if we can deepen this shot up here. And this, of course, we have Van Dyke Brown, a little bit of raw umber, and just a tiny bit of uh, shading gray. So it's a nice dark color. And just going to see where else can I apply this dark color, just to deepen some shadows. I think we can do it here. Just to deepen that up a little bit. It might seem a little deep, too deep right now, but that just means we have to darken the areas around, that's all. Same thing here. I'm keeping a good distance. So I said to myself, I want this to be my channel on YouTube, my channel on Facebook, to be the best art instruction uh, channel. And so I was kind of thinking, you know, what's the best way to do it? What am I doing? What am I doing wrong? Why am I not getting as many views as others? And then finally, it hit me. I'm concentrating on you guys. What's best for you? What What do you like uh, as far as learning? Uh, and then I listened and the best way to learn is to watch me and be able to ask questions. So I'm going to do a lot more live streams, a lot more than most people do. Actually more than almost every artist out there. I want to do them almost every day. Uh, so 
that really helps me to know that I'm on the right track right now. And William has a question. Uh, he says here he always paints on the easel and draw on a flat surface. Yes, just like me. And that allows you to keep the airbrush exactly. Uh, you can move around better. When you're flat, you're not even seeing it correctly and you got to maneuver the airbrush. So definitely I agree with you there on that one, William, that's for sure. So, so g guys and girls out there, do you feel it's better to have these live streams? Uh, do you really get a lot from that that you're able to ask questions? I'm still going to do my videos on YouTube, but do you like the live streams a couple of week? Do you think that's uh, a good learning tool? And of course I'm coming in with that dark brown, deepening the shadow here. Oh, uh, thanks, Wendy. So you find, Wendy, that the live streams are very helpful as far as uh, a learning tool. And Wendy, thank you for always, always being so supportive. Uh, Wendy has been, uh, you know, going to my live streams almost from the very beginning. She's a very good artist. I mean, she did this amazing portrait. You guys got to see it. So fantastic. I believe it's on her YouTube page. Ah, oh, thanks, Willie. So you find that the live streams are very, very helpful. So I appreciate that. And Matt, uh, well, thank you. And uh, thanks, Matt. And, and let me know if you have any suggestions. And I'm trying to do things that are special and really reach out to the, the artists. And be a place where you can ask questions, even if it has nothing to do with the with the the portrait I'm working on or the painting I'm working on. Just a question that would really be uh, beneficial for you guys. Oh, great! Okay, Wendy. See, that's good feedback. That you know, visual learners and. Uh, you know, we all learn in different ways, and so that's that's very important. So this is important because doing the live stream, I can listen to you guys, and I can listen to what is what's missing in other YouTube videos. What's missing when you go to uh, art class and your teacher? So I'm definitely listening to you guys and want to uh, really push myself as a teacher and help you guys get better. Oh, great. So, Dion, that's fantastic. So, yeah, the live view is perfect. Also, what's really cool about the live, so when I do my videos, uh, if I mess up, I'm going to edit it out, right? But here, if I make a mistake like the teeth uh, earlier, I can show you like, wow, I mess up too. So and I can actually, we can fix it together. So when it happens to you, you know exactly what to do. So that's really good. Wow, thanks William. So yeah, I'm definitely getting consensus. The live stream is definitely a better way to learn. And I'm gonna do it in conjunction with the, the videos that I edit online. So it'll be a nice combination. But definitely, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to concentrate on the live streams because I'm listening and listening to you guys. And live streams definitely seems the way to go. Back when I was a kid, you know, going to art school, uh, you know, information wasn't as readily available. To catch a live demonstration like this, you had to sign up and it was only maybe once, twice a year. Even though living in New York, I was very blessed, but only once, twice a year did you get to see your favorite artist uh, actually do a demonstration. And you had to hear about it, and you had to be available that day. Yeah, so at times are much better today for the art student. I think if I was a student today, uh, as opposed to in the 80s, the late eight, mid to late 80s, I would have learned a lot quicker.
later I'm going to show everybody. Not today. Uh, thank you, Wendy. That means a lot to me. Thank you so much. Uh, Wendy said that uh, she thinks I'm a very, uh, thinks I'm the best teacher. So that means a lot. And Dion, thanks. I'm so glad that you know that I'm on the right track. That this is definitely the way to to reach you guys and really help you. Yes, I find that too, Matt. Matt says that a lot of the videos in Airbrush are geared towards automotive. And that's, you know, that happens because that's what the field has mostly been for the, you know, for years. So, so Matt, you know, more of a fine artist, he, he uh, doesn't relate as well as, you know, me being just a fine artist and just doing it just for doing the uh, artwork itself, not having a purpose to be on a car so it's great that that's also a great point okay so now I'm getting pretty happy with with the way things are going with this so I'm darkening it up but we're not going we're not rushing it because if I rush it there's a better chance I can make a disastrous mistake especially something with sepia now this is funny because sepia and me aren't the best friends. <laughs> I mean, I something about sepia has always been uh, a rough point with me. So I wanted to do something I didn't feel comfortable, then we can do it together. So to help you guys know that you know it's good to get outside your comfort zone, right? It really is. Yeah, me too. No such thing as uh, YouTube, William. Uh, oh wow thank you thank you I appreciate that so William says he now he really appreciates YouTube and the ability to see artists like myself work so very nice I appreciate your comments you're very encouraging everybody today always having a little tough time with flow and you see that you're probably gonna have to take your 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 nails here, your thumb and index finger, and just lightly peel it off, and then test it out. Sometimes, in a garbage can, you might have to just take off this backing. See that? There you go. And you have the needle. You got the chucking, uh, chucking nut. You're not going to uh, loosen that at all, but you're just gonna pull back the air, grab the chucking nut, and pull back. And what you do, let me see if you can see. What you do is you're getting rid of any kind of little pink that might be in the nozzle. It works most of the time. Sometimes there's a dry piece that's in there, and you have to really go in there and clean it. But let's see if this took care of it. Oh yeah. Nice flow. Okay. Let's see if I can raise the air pressure a little bit. And so on this one, so if you notice, I have something here on the bottom. And that's a, on the, the Eclipse side feed, the H, HP SBS. It does not have, is it HP? Let's see. Yes, HP SPS. It doesn't have a valve, so you have to have the valve set on the compressor. But sometimes the compressor is far away. So Iwata has this and it connects to the bottom and then it has a connection so the hose connects to this here, which is a MAC valve. Micro air control. And what you do is it controls the amount of pressure going into the airbrush. So, so I have I hold down the air. I'm not pulling back. And if you can hear it, when I move it back and forth, I let more or less air out. So that's really good. I think it's around twenty-five dollars. So I definitely recommend if you're an Iwata person to get one. Oh, Hector says here, 
Uh, have I had the opportunity to compare cheap versus expensive airbrushes? Yes. Great question. Hector, if my very first airbrush was a Badger 150. It was horrible. I mean, as far as, you know, I didn't know it was horrible. And I was having such a horrible time, I almost was like, do I quit this airbrush thing? Because it just, when you pulled back, it wasn't responsive. And it just, it just wasn't a good time. And then I was watching a YouTube video, and I saw this, I'd seen this YouTube video of Daniel Powers. And he's an Australian airbrush artist. And he was working with this Iwata, the high performance the high line and I was like whoa look how he was doing his little head like this he was doing his little tiny head about this size and he was getting in there with detail and I was like holy cow and he was doing it on a car and I was like I have to get that airbrush and when I got in that airbrush I really knew where the extra money went so you know long story short get the best airbrush you can afford so, uh, Hector, may I ask, what airbrush are you working with now? Okay, so I have this dark color here, and what I can do is... Sort of soften up this edge here. So I soften up the edge around it, and then I'm going to come in with a freehand shield. I'm going to wait for it to dry a little bit, and then inside I'm going to go ahead and make it dark. That's going to give more of that impression of, you know, of her arm and her breasts sort of against each other. Oh, a cheap one. Uh, Hector, are you uh, key in Los Estados Unidos or in, uh, in uh, Latin America? Now, uh, what I would do is get the best airbrush you can afford. I have some really good suggestions of really good airbrushes that don't cost as much. Uh, in Chile, okay. Uh, so Chile, Hector, I would definitely get... Uh, here's a good airbrush. It's called the Neo by Iwata. And that's about $60 US. And that would be a good starter airbrush it doesn't cost you too much so it's the Iwata Neo it's a top feed airbrush that's a really good one also I would also if you can go a little higher I would definitely get the Eclipse and this one right here is about 140 US dollars but it's gonna really make you work better and it's gonna you're gonna have a much better time so, Hector, if you can, uh, you know, you can even message me. I can send you some links and some information on different airbrushes, depending on what your... Now, if you can't afford those airbrushes, that's okay. Work with what you can afford for now. And uh, I'll see if I can get more information. Uh, Wendy uh, says here, she says, what is it between the Eclipse and the Micron? A lot of things. Uh, it's almost the difference between a, a nice Ford car and then this would be like your Jaguar. The differences are on the outside but the bigger difference is on the inside of how they are are fitted with the O-rings and how they're centered, the needle, how polished the needle is. So all those different aspects is just going to make the Micron Wendy a much better experience. Uh, you are going to see uh, when you pull back, it's just going to give you the right amount of, of response. Uh, with the Eclipse, you got to learn, you know, uh, when, you know, how much you have to pull back. 
It's a little more uh, temperamental and temperamental in a way that it's not going to do everything you want it to do. But you can learn with the Eclipse, and it can actually sometimes be better than the Micron. But the Micron is really, you'll know when the, where the money has gone. So the HPC Plus, very good airbrush, 0 0.3, yes, I love that airbrush. Uh, so you want uh, a 0 0.2 for finer details. So you started with the Badger, yeah, like me, I started with that Badger 150 and it was horrible, I almost quit airbrush. Yes, uh, so Wendy will definitely talk uh, which airbrush, would, which Micron would be the best for you. So there's several different microns, so we can definitely go over that. Uh, different microns are best for different people. Uh, some have the side feed, but the good thing is, is that with the side feed, you can see over your, you can see exactly like a pencil. So the side feeds are good. But the drawback is that you have a very little, very small amount of paint you can put in. Now this is a gravity fed, and of course, as the word says, gravity because it gravity causes it to go through. So you need a little, a little less air pressure than the side feed for it to for it to shoot through. But when you're looking straight over, right, you have an obscured view. So that's not a big deal. You just have to learn to paint off to the side. That's all. But some people like that having it, you know, not having that obscured view. Plus is that you can put a lot of paint in here. See, this is this is a much bigger, probably like twice or maybe more paint you can put in here. So you can definitely be doing larger areas. This is good. Good for people doing automotive, murals. You don't want to use the side feed when you're doing murals, that's for sure. So that is, if you're doing like uh, like nail art, there's another one that doesn't have, it's a gravity fed, but it's like a little hole in the top here. It's like a little tiny hole and you put little drops in. And that's good if you're doing like really micro, you know, artwork. Uh, so yeah, gravity is good. And, and side feed is good. So either one, depending on what you're doing, is important. So yeah, so definitely. And if you get a chance, guys, I have two videos on my YouTube channel. Uh, one on the Custom Micron, and another video on, the, on this one, the side feed. So they're very helpful. So check them out if you can. So I think they would help you, Wendy, too. But definitely message me if you guys are buying an airbrush and we'll go over it together, find out what's best for you, and then we'll have a good game plan as to what airbrush you should get. And also, how much would it cost? You know, you gotta, you have to remember you have to get special hoses if you're going from Iwata to Harder and Steamback or different brands. So that is something you really want to uh, consider. Uh, Yes, definitely. Uh, so every airbrush artist, every experienced airbrush artist, when they first, you know, start, they'll start, they'll they'll get a uh, a test piece of paper, and you'll do some dot dots and dagger strokes. Let me see if we get to here. So here, you can notice I have a scrap piece of paper here. So I'm always going to, before I start working, I make sure that the airbrush is working correctly. That there's no, there's no uh, clouds or there's no problem with the needle. That my paint is thick enough or thin enough. And this way when I start working, and then I also practice a little bit. So you practice for a few minutes, you get all the uh, rust out of you. And then you're able, but always, always, always do that before you go in to your work. I remember one time, I was, just last week, I was doing one of those small India ink paintings. Sorry about the compressor. I was doing one of those uh, really small India ink paintings, and uh, those are a lot of fun. I did one of Gal Gadot, and that's actually... Uh, 
a couple of videos on YouTube you can see that and that's with India ink on my little sketch pad so I was doing one of this particular person and everything was going well and I went without testing it here and I went like this and the nozzle was I mean the needle was back so when I put the air it went and destroyed what I was working on good thing it wasn't you know something I was working on for a long time it was in the beginning of it so I started it over but yeah you know, sometimes I have to learn the hard way so I can teach you guys what not to do uh, sometimes I do use no uh, Jake X do I use a mid mid tone surface and those who watch my like Wendy those who watch my uh, Facebook tutorials and live streams know I love to draw on midtone. As far as airbrush, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. I did it on uh, several of them. I'm going to show you a painting that I did. Let me show you this one. This is on a midtone surface. Actually, I did this one on a surface that was the midtone of her flesh color and it worked out pretty well so let me see I'm just going to move this oh, that's the wrong one let's go to the next okay so this is a painting that I did a while ago and I actually painted this using this flesh color throughout and that really was helpful it made the painting go a lot quicker let me take this off of the tripod here so let's see so here you can see the lighting's a little interesting in here so I do apologize so you can see uh, I did use that that technique of having starting with this mid-tone color and then working from there so it does work it is very good so sorry I can't get you a, a, a proper picture uh, image of it but hopefully you can see the general idea let's see okay move this back Okay, see this is what happens when I move stuff around guys. I should be okay in just one moment. Okay, cool. So let me go ahead and put this painting back. Yeah, but to answer your question, definitely. Sometimes it's really, really good to work on a tinted surface because it makes things go quicker. Here's something else that I've been uh, working on. Sometimes this is uh, show you how I start a piece. Let's see. Here is a drawing, so I draw it out, and this one I'm doing an underpainting. So I'm doing an underpainting in India ink, and so this is on a white surface. So either way is fine, either way works out. It all depends on what kind of uh, technique I want. So in painting, the one thing you do lose by having a tinted surface is you lose that glow of the white underneath. So your colors are a lot less uh, translucent, I find. Uh, thanks, Jake and Matthew. I appreciate that. Yes, a good airbrush holder. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> that really helps. Otherwise, you know, it's so hard to park your airbrush. Thanks, William. I really appreciate all the really kind words. Uh, thank you, Wendy. Thank you so much. I, I enjoyed that painting. That was a fun painting to do okay so so now I think we're in good shape here and I'm gonna come in with some warm orange color and see if I can warm up around here so we have like the dark and we have the light so now we got to do a little bit of a mid-tone here and I think that would be helpful let's see Let's see what's going on with this other camera. I did move things around a little bit. Let's see. 
see if I can get a better angle here. So you can see my somewhat messy studio. <laughs> uh, and here's a question by Jake. He says, how do I know when the value I'm putting down that is correct? Like, how do I know when to stop putting down paint? Well, definitely you want to bring it up slowly. And on my Facebook, uh, Facebook drawing tutorials is that you can always go, so go very light. You can always go darker. How you will gauge is you will start by applying your darkest darks and then have your lightest lights. And then as you're working, you'll say to yourself, like, like right here, this value, I ask myself, is it as dark as this or lighter? And that will help me to gauge. So it's sort of everything is relative, right? Uh, just making sure that you are uh, not making it darker. Like you can look at this right here and say, oh, it needs to be darker. But if you don't pay attention to here, you'll know that this has to be lighter than this and then vice versa. So always gauge and look around the whole, like almost playing chess, you want to see the whole chessboard, not just one area. But you'll get there. And I want you to, Jake, is to practice your values, uh, doing value scales. Uh, that really helps. Uh, what I'm going to do, uh, Jake, um, if you can, just, uh, you know, you can instant message me. Uh, or my email is paintedglyphs at gmail.com and what you can do is just message me your email address I'll send you some things that will help you with the values that you can practice that will really pay dividends in your work but definitely go light you can always go darker down the line so definitely go slow with value as far as putting the paint down Hopefully that helps, sir. So let's see if we can go ahead and mix that orange color. And I think that would be helpful here. I still got to go to the farmer's market today. Got to get some uh, bad fruit and vegetables to juice. So what I'm going to do right now, guys, is I'm going to stop. And I just want to thank everyone for making my Saturday morning really cool. I love talking with you guys and hanging out. Really, it was really cool today. So what we'll do is I'll try and do one tonight. Uh, so my email address is paintedglyphs.com. No, I'm sorry. My email address isn't that. My email address is paintedglyphs at gmail.com. And I'm sure you can see that. Uh, you, you, and also you can go on uh, www.paintedglyphs.com and you'll see my email address there. Email me. Leave your email. And what I could do is I could send you guys notifications uh, when I'm live streaming. Give you guys some time. And uh, so that, that might be helpful for you guys. Also... When I'm also going to tell you what I'm doing on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. So there might be a time that you're available, so that would be great. But I'm always going to keep them on the site, so you'll, you'll be able to see them even after they're done. So uh, definitely go ahead and do that. Ask any questions. Uh, let's see. Let's see what else we have here. Okay, so let's see if any more questions before I go. Oh no, you're welcome guys. Thank you. Uh, I'm so glad Jake and everyone, uh, you know, we got Jake, William, Matthew. Uh, who else am I missing? I don't want to miss anybody. Uh, let's see who else we got. Uh, no, thank you everyone. I uh, really appreciate your time and it was a lot of fun. Hector. Uh, thank you for coming all the way from Chile and we have Gloria Bupathi and Phil over on Facebook I don't want to miss anybody Wendy of course always Kiva thank you again uh, thank you everyone
for hanging out with me. I hope you guys have a great Saturday. And don't forget, so email me at paintedglyphs uh, at gmail.com. This way I can send you notifications when new ones I'm going to live stream. So I don't want you guys to miss them. So take care, guys. Had a lot of fun.